I implore you to take a look at the sky tonight. Between now and sunrise, you'll be able to see five planets with your naked eye. I was staring up at the red planet last night, thinking to myself, whenever it comes for me the opportunity to live on Mars, I will go in a heartbeat. And I can tell you three reasons why. Imagine that you live on an island in the middle of the ocean, and that on your island there is a myth, a legend, that every so many generations a giant wave arrives, tall as the moon, and wipes out your civilization. Also imagine that on the distant horizon, and perhaps only on the clearest of days, you can see a second island, but you have no way to get there. And then someone invents a boat. Would you take that boat and go to the second island? You might go out of pure curiosity. You might go as a means to safeguard your civilization from the next cataclysmic wave. These are good motivations. But perhaps the most compelling reason for you to go to that second island, or for me to go to Mars, is what we might learn. Despite its fiery appearance, Mars is much, much colder than Earth. You can't wander around in bare feet. No. To live on Mars, we would have to terraform it. We'd have to change the climate to make it a little more like Switzerland. And this is not, this is not science fiction. It's possible on Mars because there are huge reserves of carbon dioxide frozen at the polar caps and elsewhere on the surface. And if we could add just a little heat, we could release so much CO2 through a runaway greenhouse effect that the pressure and the temperature on Mars would be thick enough and hot enough that liquid water could flow. Scientists suggest we could do this by smashing asteroids into the planet, or by exploding hydrogen bombs, or even with super space mirrors that would redirect sunlight onto the polar caps. But probably the most practical method would be for people living on Mars to release hydrocarbons. We already know a little bit about how that works here on Earth. And then after a few thousand years of introducing more and more complex plants and animals, there would be enough oxygen on Mars that my great-great-great-grandchildren could run around barefoot and without any scuba gear. So in addition to satisfying our curiosity and helping protect the community of life from events that, for example, killed the dinosaurs, going to Mars could teach us things that we cannot yet imagine. We may even learn how to control the climate back here on Earth. So tonight, please, when you leave here, take a look up at the sky and find your second island.